Good morning, YouTube. All right, we are back up at the yard where we parked the trucks. And today we're gonna start working on Project Goliath. As I said in the last video, Daytona Beach Bike Week is coming up fast and we have two weeks and one day until I need to leave to head to Daytona. Bike Week starts on the 4th, but we always have to get down there early to do our setup. Plus we've got a lot of friends and family in that area that we like to visit with. So having those extra couple days really helps out a lot. Now I have a really long list of things that need to be done on Goliath. And when I say Goliath, I mean the truck and the trailer, not just the truck. And I don't know that I'm gonna get them all done, but I'm gonna do my best. But I'm definitely gonna focus on the drivability things first, uh, safety, so on and so forth. Now I was gonna show you guys the list, but the list is in my phone and I'm recording with my phone. So I just can't do that just now, but maybe I can throw it in, but it's quite a lengthy list. Um, today, what we're gonna focus on is replacing the brake relay valve. Those of you that have been following through the end of last season know that in between Panama City Beach in the fall and heading out to the Lone Star Rally in Texas, which is our very last show of the year, we had an issue with one of the Bendix brake relays that is actually right down here between the tandems, uh, started to leak air through the purge valve. And the brake still worked fine, but an air leak in an air system is never a good thing. When the problem occurred, we were in Louisiana. We only had a few days to get to Texas and no place in the local vicinity had the part available without having to special order it. And we just weren't gonna be there long enough to receive the part. So against my better judgment, we decided to just roll with it. Like I said, the brakes were working fine. There was no uh, performance issues. It was just leaking air. So the worst case scenario is it was gonna overwork the air compressor some. Maybe, just maybe, I will replace that air compressor before we head to Daytona as well, because I am getting a lot of oil in the system. So that compressor is most likely on its way out. All right guys, so this is what we're going to be replacing today. This is the brake relay valve. As you can see, there's a few ports. There's one on the top. There are two on this side, one on this side, and one on this now, side. The purpose of this relay valve is to send air to the air brakes when commanded to. So looking at this valve, the single port on the two ends is where you would supply or pass through the air from the original air tank. So this side here will be our inlet, this side will be our outlet, and that will go back to the next relay valve that runs the rear axle. This one is for the front drive axle. The two ports on this side are actually the lines that will go out to each individual brake chamber. And then the small one on top is actually the signal line. So this is gonna be the line that goes from your actual brake pedal. I, I think they call it a treadle valve or something like that. So anyway, when you press that pedal down, it allows air to come to this. And when the air pressure goes into this top, it pushes the little valve down inside that you can barely see. And that will allow the air that is coming in from the inlet from the tanks, a much larger volume of air to then be dispersed to the two brake chambers. And on the very bottom, there is actually the bleed off valve. So then when you let off of the pedal, it allows that air pressure that's stored in here to be released. And that's where you get that sound when people let go of the brake pedal. Well, that's actually what's the problem on the one that's on Goliath currently. The brakes are working fine. That valve is not sealing properly. So it's constantly leaking air when we're running down the road. Well guys, that sounds pretty simple, right? And it should be, but I don't think it's going to be. And this is why. So here we are at the Kenworth and this is the brake relay valve for the Kenworth. Now. The difference is the Kenworth only uses one valve instead of two. So there are four outlets that will go to all four rear wheels. And then you still got the signal lines coming into the top. Really different design, but the concept is all the same. The difference is you can clearly see this one sitting up here on top of the frame. Access is really easy to get to. I can see every bolt. I can see every line. I've got room to work. But in Goliath, we have to crawl into this little hole down here and then it's up and it's mounted to the inside of the frame rail right in between the front and rear drives. Well, the big problem with that is I'm a big boy. That's a small space, so it's not going to be easy to get to. On top of that, the lighting down there is terrible because no light comes in because of the giant box that's built onto the back of the chassis that we live in when we're on the road. 
So I have to carry multiple lights on there and put them up on multiple angles so I can see what I'm doing. And it's just not gonna be easy. Because of that reason, I don't know that I'm gonna get a lot of footage down there of the actual job being done, only because I don't know that I'm gonna get the camera set up and chances are I'm gonna get so greasy. The, the whole bottom of this is covered with grease. That valve happens to be on the frame right about even with one of the differential joints on that second drive shaft. So as it spins and grease flings off of it, it's caked all over this and all over everything down there. Now, the last time I was up here with a pressure washer, I did climb underneath Goliath. I sprayed it all down with engine degreaser and blasted it the best I could. So it's gonna be better, but it's still gonna be pretty messy. All right, guys, I have talked far too much at this point, so I'm gonna get started. But before I do, I'm gonna move Goliath out and get it out here into the parking lot because where we're parked back here, we are on that gravel bed and I just don't wanna crawl around on the gravel and it'll be a lot easier to get out here, get it jacked up enough to where I have room to crawl underneath it. Well guys, there you go. You can hear how bad that leak is. In fact, at idle, I couldn't get the truck to maintain over 100 pounds of pressure. It was actually staying in that 90 to 94 pounds, which is definitely too low. Now I go down the highway, the engine has a higher RPM. It was maintaining on our way back from Texas. But either way, it's gotta get fixed. 
as you can see, I drove her up on some blocks just to uh, give myself a little bit more clearance down here so I can get my big belly to go underneath that part of the body. Alright guys, so there's the valve. You see how close it is to the shock, the cross member, the airbag. Just not an easy spot to get to. Hi guys, that was correct. Just no room to get down there and hold the camera. That and I would have needed a third arm. There were so many cases because I can't sit up underneath the truck. I had to use one hand to hold my body weight up, use the other hand to the tools. It just wasn't easy. Um, and as you can see, my hands definitely don't want to touch my camera any more than I have to at this point. Anyway, let me go wash up and I'll show you the part. All right, guys, here we go. The old one is out next to the new one. I'm uh, documenting this and take a couple of pictures. That way I can see the orientation of how all the fittings are put in because I need to take all of the fittings out of this relay and transfer them over to this relay as well as the mounting bracket. Of course, as I take everything apart, I'm gonna clean it all, reseal everything. Uh, probably even paint that bracket before it goes back on there because it's just covered with rust. That way it'll all go back together and be nice and clean. Not that it'll stay that way, but it'll be that way when I put it back in. Well guys, it has been a bit challenging. As you can see, I have got most of the fittings put back into the new one. Unfortunately, the inlet and outlet, the large ones, they are slightly bigger than the fittings that came out of the old one so i'm gonna to have to go find a bushing or something like that but as you can see i've got all the fittings cleaned up pretty good not coated with grease like they were i even uh cleaned and ground the bracket down probably go hit it with some spray paint just to seal it in so i guess i'm gonna go hunt for a few parts so i can finish this up well, guys joe may have saved me again we'll never talk to him before i drove into town to go to lowe's and he had some bushings that worked perfect so I can make it work. Now, the downside to that is that's gonna change the length that that fitting sticks out of here. So it may give me a little bit of trouble trying to hook those hoses up down there. And uh, with the ferrules already being crushed on the hoses, I don't wanna have to cut short in the hoses because that just makes a simple project harder. So um, we're gonna give it a try and see how it works. Well, all right guys, I just climbed up from underneath the truck and I finally got it in. I got all the lines to line up. There was only one that was a little trouble because of the angle it came in, trying to get it to back up enough to make that connection because it ran through a hole in the frame, which made it hard for me to get any kind of flex in that. But anyway, it's in. So I'm getting ready to go start Goliath and leak check everything. i tell you what, shoulders are sore. I mean, you gotta imagine laying in there like this, trying to do all the stuff above your head, drive shaft, shocks, just no comfortable way to do it. I'm glad to not be down there anymore. Hopefully there's no leaks and I don't have to climb down there other than to just check it and not do any more work. So hang on a second, we're gonna go start this thing up. Well guys, we had to have done something right. It's been running three, four minutes now and uh, there's no audible leak. Now I haven't climbed under there yet, but uh, I'm gonna go down with the soapy water and we will leak check all the connections. Oh yeah, and it's up to, uh, yeah, good pressure already. The uh, it was taking forever to build pressure. I'm really surprised at how quick it, it built up that time. Okay, so I'm gonna air up all my airbags a little bit higher, uh, give me a little bit more room down there. Then I'm gonna shut the truck off and I'll crawl down there, listen for audible leaks without the, the noise interference from the engine running, along with my uh, trusty spray bottle of soapy water, and we'll double check everything. guys there it is the new piece installed now that the truck is off and I'm down here I can hear just a slight little bit of air so I'm gonna spray the soap and see where it comes from but guys you have a leak and you see right there where those fittings come together well it's not bubbling now but that's where the leaks coming from right there I don't know if you can see it
See it right there? The air bubbles. All right guys, so I went back down underneath the truck and I pulled out that fitting combination, took it all apart, recleaned the threads, and there was a little bit of like a hard sealant that he got trapped in there and I guess I missed it the first time. Uh, but I got it out of there now, got it all sealed back up and everything seems to be good. Now I was gonna do a few other repairs on Goliath while we were here, but as you can see, I am losing daylight very quickly. So I guess that's gonna be it for today and that'll be it for this video. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a comment down below, hit the like button. And if you didn't like it, hit the, hit the thumbs down button twice. And um, until the next time I see you, you guys keep those engines running.